Around the world, including in many areas here in the United States, soft ticks transmit a variety of human and animal diseases, including tick-borne relapsing fever. Tick-borne relapsing fever spirochetes are a bacteria that, when they're transmitted by the tick, colonize and reside in the blood. But they get to really high uh, loads in the blood, and what can happen at that point if they're not treated um, patients can have really adverse effects like the high fevers, nausea, vomiting, in pregnant women it causes miscarriage or preterm labor. And in some areas um, of the world uh, there's a, a five over about five percent mortality rate associated with it. It's especially common in sub-Saharan Africa where it geographically overlaps with malaria. Indeed many uh, cases that are diagnosed as malaria are probably actually tick-borne relapsing fever. Over the past decade, Dr. Joe Lopez and his team have demonstrated the ease of bacterial transmission from ticks to mammals, developed molecular tests to detect exposure to the pathogens, and developed animal models that accurately mimic human infection in order to test new compounds to treat and prevent disease. So when these ticks, they have a long lifespan, 10 to 20 years. So when they acquire the spirochetes, which are a bacteria, they can harbor the bacteria for years. And they could go for years too without eating. They could span up to five years, it's been shown, where after that time period, the bacteria are still infectious when these ticks go and feed again. We're interested in understanding how tick-borne relapsing fever spirochetes colonizes the tick and is transmitted to mammals. This is a tick where these represent the salivary glands in the midgut. When a tick acquires the bacteria, they enter the midgut. Within one to two weeks after, there's a population that exit migrate and establishes a persistent colonization of the salivary glands. Our current project is to understand how populations of spirochete colonize the midgut while others colonize the salivary glands and then their roles in pathogenesis. Our goal is that by understanding the molecular mechanisms of vector colonization and transmission will lead to the development of vaccines and therapeutics against these pathogens.